Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast between Sterling spawning as the blue Terran player against EG Grubby spawning as the green Protoss. Yes, this is Grubby, famous, famous from Warcraft 3. He has switched to Protoss. I think he started off playing Terran during the early beta, and now he is playing Protoss. So I am very, very much looking forward to this particular matchup just because... I want to see Grubby, um, I want to see how Grubby does as he transitions into a new game like um, StarCraft 2. Um, so yeah, Grubby versus Sterling, this is going to be cross spawns. I'll try to talk about the game a little bit more and not too much about how much um, I enjoy Grubby's um, gameplay style and I like the fact that he is trying to branch out into a new game. If you beat me, which is well possible, <laughs> In Control will avenge me. Alright. So yeah, a shout out to In Control as well, and I did an interview with him a couple months back. A very, very, just a really, really pleasant guy to be around. A nice guy to talk to, um, you know, just taking the time to sit down with me back when I think I had around like maybe 3,000 subscribers, 4,000 subscribers. Yeah, it was quite some time ago. Anyways, EG Grubby now is setting up that standard um, 11 or 12 um, gateway. We should be seeing a 12 racks coming in from Sterling as well, and this game is now underway. Um, We'll see whether or not Grubby goes for Dark Templar just because um, it is the closest thing to a Blade Master in StarCraft 2, a cloaked, permanently cloaked unit that can attack and deal a lot of damage. But Terran versus. <laughs> I realize that a lot of my matchups are my worst. Okay, and um, yeah, except for the fact that the Dark Templar doesn't have to break when walk in order to, um, to keep on attacking. So now we see a probe making its way out across the map. The probe will head up that ramp in just a moment and then be able to find out what exactly Sterling is doing. Sterling doing a pretty standard build, has a refinery up, does have one barracks currently in play as well, should be upgrading to an orbital command and now training that one marine in order to get that probe away. And not exactly what is pro Grubby doing with that one probe. Oh, the Grubby now moved down the ramp and then pretended to leave and now came back in. So he may come along this far side here and be able to and get in a little bit more later scouting. I really, really like this play by Grubby. Grubby realizing how important scouting is here on Metalopolis and now gonna hide in the vents. He may even be able to set up a pylon here and start warping in units. We do see also another pylon being warped in back over here as well. A zealot now will go ahead and meet and greet this one SCV. And now in comes a Marine. Oh, the Marine of Sterling catching the sight of Grubby's probe. And I believe the probe may get taken down. Yes, I believe he will. No, the second Marine needs to head over. And yes, Sterling now heading over with the second Marine. Down goes the probe. Very, very nicely played and really, really well done by Sterling. Sterling making sure that there was no probe inside his base and, and then able to shoot it away. And now this SCV, which does have a faster movement speed. Oh, getting surrounded! A classic Warcraft 3 surround with four units taking down that one SCV. Wow, very, very nicely played. Um, nicely done there. Um, Warcraft 3 skills definitely showing up and now Sterling getting a low ground expansion. We also see a second barracks being in place down as well. And a little curious as to what exactly Sterling is going for. Sterling doesn't need three SCVs on this one refinery. If he's going to go for a fast expansion, especially since he's sitting on now 200 gas, additional minerals would probably help him out a little bit more. He is researching that concussive sh shell though, and also training up more marauders, so that will definitely help him out. Grubby currently activating one zone, or both Zelnaga watchtowers with both a, a Zealot and a Stalker, and now Grubby just trying to get as much sight as possible, setting up an expansion of his own. So both players setting up expansions about 5 minutes, or before the five minute mark in this game. So this and looks to be a very, very um, long, long game as it is going to be a very macro intensive game. And in my excitement, I didn't even um, remember to look at how long this game was. I just saw, saw Grubby. I'm like, okay, I have to cast this game and hopefully this game will be good. Marines and Marauders just standing outside the front door. We do see Concussive Shell has been researched. We are also getting a reactor up as well. So Sterling going for mass infantry now, which is a pretty standard build against Protoss. I've seen the mass infantry, and I've also seen the standard um, Destiny Cloudfist, or yeah, Destiny Cloudfist, hopefully I got that right. 
Shout out to Husky there. A Destiny Cloud Fist build. A very, very, um, yeah, every single time I don't use it, people flame me. But now I feel like if I do use it, someone's going to flame me as well. Anyway, Zealot's now trying to run in into that bunker there, quickly getting taken down. And that Stalker will be able to run all the way home. Another SCV going to activate on this Zelnaga Watchtower here. And now quickly see that the Stalker is returning. And now the SCB wants to do some scouting, wants to make sure that there is an expansion coming in. Otherwise, he needs to get more and more defenses. SCB will be coming in in just a moment, quickly seeing that the expansion is up. And now the SCB trying to get as much information and sight as possible. I believe that one stop, yeah, one SCB will get taken down. Down it goes there as more pylons are being warped in. Um, both players just sitting in their bases making sure not to make any mistakes right now. Sterling, at some point, will need to set up a factory, there you go, in order to get that starport and then start training Metavax. Metavax, a very, very welcome addition um, to the Terran army, allowing for both dropship play and medic play all at the same time. And so very, very nicely done there. So Sterling now just training up a lot of Marines and also getting more, um, getting stronger infantry. I don't see an engineering bay though. So that is a little bit of a surprise to me as engineering bay would allow for detection on Dark Templar with missile turrets and also allow the um, weapons upgrade. Since Sterling is investing so heavily into marines and marauders i would assume that he would be doing that an observer now making its way out from grubby meanwhile we have an, a third expansion now being set up by sterling so sterling making sure to be up on expansions and should have a very very strong um, a very very strong economy in just a moment the only problem is is that he doesn't have that many scvs he is currently trying to train up two scvs at a time but um you can see that grubby actually has a much stronger harvester count 44 compared to 35 and as the game goes later and later on, Sterling will have to start using that energy for scanner sweeps as opposed to um, continually being able to call down mules. We see that starport now being constructed here, another reactor being set up. Not quite sure why he decided to build a reactor and then lift off this barracks. He could still be training up more marines there. One SCV still patrolling back and forth. Grubby does not see that SCV. The SCV does not see that pylon. The Observer, however, does see the expansion has been placed down. 45 Harvesters compared to 39, now 41 to 39. And as Grubby is no longer chrono boosting his Nexus, he is not going to have that strong of an economic lead. He is running off of two bases, though, and he is getting the level 1 weapons and level 1 armor upgrades. He is also getting Immortals trained up as well. I don't see a Robotics Bay, and the Robotics Bay would probably be the better call at this point. We now see Sterling getting a lot of um, production up. Starport, Ghost Academy, more refineries, as what two Stalkers are trying to make their way in over here. Not going to be able to deal that much damage at all. Marines um, are already joining the party here. They are um, not upgraded, but they do have that combat shield and stim pack will be finished in just a moment. Bunker now being placed down, Planetary Fortress being upgraded, and now Grubby needs to do something in order to take up an additional base, otherwise he will quickly find himself behind. We have a Twilight Council currently warping in, so and Twilight Council now furthering the tech path on that gate on those gateway units. We may see High Templar, we may see Dark Templar as um as I don't think he'll just stop at Stalker Blink or Zealot Charge, getting another Immortal up and running as well as these Marines and Marauders are now on the move. This may become a problem as Grubby only has a, a large number of Stalkers. We do see Zealot Charge, but that Zealot Charge will not finish anywhere in time. And now, oh, Stalkers quickly running backwards. This is just a bad play by Grubby. Grubby not being careful at all losing three of those units but now we see that guardian shield is up are we gonna get that force field there we go there's that force field splitting up many of those marines marines getting caught in a single file line and now being forced to run back home a couple of mortals unable to do anything as well more of those stalkers trying to give chase against those marines the marines finally have stim pack and there goes another marine there taking a look at the losses losses pretty much both sides are even at this stage we are getting templar archives level two ground armor level two weapons upgrade and zealot charge so this is going to become very very good for grubby if grubby can continue to push in the, into this location here this planetary fortress however will get a lot of damage and a lot of damage is being dealt marauders is just trying to stim trying to deal more damage marauders also coming back over here a lot of sentries but the sentries are no longer as effective against those marauders and now more force fields coming in more force fields need to push back and split up some of those units here. Mortal now trying to take down this planetary fortress. And now with Stim Pack, I believe this is not going to be very good at all. More Immortals trying to reinforce this location here. There are a couple of Marauders. Stalkers now giving chase. And those Met um, Marauders returning and retreating home. The Metavacs are low on energy. 
So low energy metavax there, as those units are I'm not going to be able to use stim pack as sparingly. There are a lot of bunkers on the low ground protecting these expansions here. And now we finally see Grubby taking up another, um, or what, a, still a patrolling SCV. Kind of cute that he's actually trying to patrol around this one, um, around this one nexus here. An observer in the air able to spot out what um, he needs to see. Taking a look at the harvester count now, 62 to 52. So Grubby definitely needs to take up an additional base very, very quickly. A lot of stalkers and zealots, um, did they get a kill on a medevac? I don't think I saw any drop play. There are a couple medevacs now ready to do another drop along the far side, perhaps sniping down this nexus right as it gets up and running, further delaying that one expansion. Production wise, we are finally getting an engineering, a second engineering bay from Sterling. Sterling already has one researching infantry armor, getting marauders and marines and ghost as well. We are getting psionic storm as well. So Psy storm currently being researched, but no high Templars yet. And Grubby with two gateways instead of um, upgrading them to warp gates yet. Um, they, I believe they will be upgraded to warp gates in just a second as probes now being transferred over here. We now see what a factory doing some scouting and now two medevacs on the move looking to um, do a drop yeah gonna drop going to stim in and then and um, snipe down this nexus and that is gonna be a problem those marauders they're simply gonna come in and there's the stim stim now trying to snipe down this nexus this nexus may get taken down very very easily it does have 2,000 hit points though so the army needs to come over a probe now trying to come over trying to deal some damage as well but there's two medevacs in the air one high templar oh a feedback hitting one of those medevacs but the nexus has been taken down and that was a pretty devastating blow to Grubby's economy, especially as Sterling currently is sitting on three bases. Um, Ghost now being trained up as well. Army-wise, still both sides pretty even, but the income-wise, you're gonna see that Sterling has a very significant advantage just because he has um, two, he has mules in play and is also able to mine off of more mineral patches, establishing now a third, a fourth command center for a, a fourth base. I believe these mineral patches will start to run out in just a moment as well. And now Sterling expanding here as well. So Sterling expanding all across the map. And he will be able to deal a lot of damage. Zealots are upgraded 2-2 two, two, though. So 2-2 two, two upgraded Zealots. And those Zealots are going to be able to charge in and deal a lot of damage. The Planetary Fortress with a base 3 armor will be able to absorb a lot of those attacks. So, and now in come more units. And oh, Zealots not ill. Now quickly going to take down that one SCV. And now um, army-wise, we could probably have Grubby yeah, with, a, uh, with a little bit larger army. And now trying to establish an expansion up on the high ground. That gold mineral patch there. We now see, we have a very, very large group of Marines and Marauders. No Colossus to be found. And now level 3 weapons upgrade currently underway. When you get to level 3 weapons upgrade, I do not understand why Grubby is not going for Colossus. Colossus deal, I, um, deal what, 42 damage per slice uh, compared to 30. So that is a very, very significant increase in damage for those units medevacs now a lot of medevacs in the air a couple size storms would be able to eat up that army very very easily in this group i don't see oh there are two um, high templars here and those high templar moving out very very far for getting a lot of damage there trying to get another size storm oh getting the me medevac and i believe did he get a medevac hit, shot one kill yeah he was able to um, um feed back a medevac and now take it down there are a couple ghosts over here raven in the air as well making sure that there are no um are no dark templars in this group one zealot quickly will get sniped down more zealots need to um, charge in level three weapons upgrade near about halfway so far so it will not be completed before the start of this battle no sterling still buying his time and if the battle goes three uh, three three upgrades against one one that is not going to be good at all. It will all really just boil down to who is able to get off those critical, critical spells first. EMP Shockwave versus Psystorm. A lot of Zealots now on the ground. The Zealots also have a decent armor. And oh, there's a nuke. A nice long distance nuke right there. Will be able to, um, I believe it's a range of six is the radius. So it should not be able to deal any damage towards the Nexus. It'll, I'm able to do 125 damage. So yeah, by the time the nuke lands, I believe the shields will be able to recharge once again. And yeah, not much damage has been dealt at all. And High Templars once again getting some more Psy Storms over there. Getting some damage, two kills there as now we have a very, very large um, gateway ball once again on the move. Grubby is at maximum food count, so he needs to make um, these units and um, go the distance and try to get some damage, and he is down currently in bases. No real, no real way of being able to mine out of these gold mineral patches as there are is one center tower here revealing 
pretty much when there are a lot of units currently mining out. We now see some probes being transferred over as well. I believe, uh, yes, another, oh, Psy Storm right there getting four SCV kills, I believe. Yeah, four SCV kills, another ghost getting feedback. So nicely done by Grubby. Grubby using feedback, sniping down ghosts and getting a lot of damage. There is one pylon over here, a medevac. I don't believe, yeah, no, Sterling doesn't know about that just quite yet, as the Stalkers are still on the move, um, and now Grubby sitting on about 2,000 minerals, he needs to do something else, and now we are getting the Extended Thermal Lance Range, getting some Photon Cannons, and also getting the Protoss Shield Stalker Blink, so it is a really, really heavy macro game coming in from Grubby, Grubby and Sterling, both of them are going to have a lot of upgrades, 2-1 two, two, upgrades so far, Stalker Blink, that Planetary Fortress will be completed in time, and now this one met um, pylon over here, did see this one marauder or no four ghosts that are will be dropping so four ghosts will be dropping out of the sky how many ghost academies are there there is only one ghost academy so it is not going to be multiple nuke play in comes a scanner sweep there and now we see that robotics bay currently coming online in comes those ghosts those ghosts are going to try to get as much damage as possible two ghosts four ghosts total and those photon cannons are now coming in in comes one or double nukes now being called in i didn't see the second ghost academy but I don't, I believe it's only going to be able to take down those pylons. And that is essentially it. That um, the rest of the buildings are, should be able to absorb a lot of that damage. And yeah, there we go. The pylons have been taken down and there. And, and now one gateway as well. So all these buildings are no longer functional. Back here, more ghosts still sniping, still dealing more damage. And now in comes the attack over here. I should have been keeping track of the minimap. Let me rewind that for you during that um, play. So in comes, oh wow. Okay, so Grubby um, doing a great job here, and in come those force fields. Force fields preventing any of those units from being able to walk up back up that ramp. In comes some feedback. Psy Storm would be able to hit a lot of those units there, but now those um, now those force fields are causing um, problems of their own. Grubby now trying to charge up the ramp will be able to get a lot of damage, but in comes that planetary fortress getting a lot of damage dealt as well. So those marauders and marines are now trying to um, come back, trying to fight back. Immortals are going to now turn their attention back onto that planetary fortress, dealing 65 damage per attack. Down goes that planetary fortress and now in comes another nuke i'm um, on to grubby's base grubby is going to have a little bit of a problem here trying to get observers trying to reveal that and now both sides continuing to battle it back and forth a lot of barracks here marauders and marines up on that high ground able to deal a lot of damage and now army wise 45 50 versus 3200 not looking good at all for grubby grubby losing more gateways he will be getting a colossus up in just a second but lost this one robotics facility over here in comes more units and zealots now running head on into this group of on this planetary fortress the immortals should be able to take it down very very easily 65 damage per attack and um, or what 62 after the armor marauders now coming in emp shockwave depleting all the energy on two of the immortals three of the immortals now out of energy completely and now sterling just rolling over grubby here on metalopolis mass marauders marauders are upgraded 2-2 against 313 or 313 upgrades and now in comes these ghosts. The ghosts are trying to finish off the rest of these units here. Two ghosts still not even sniped. And now the robotics bay taking its fair share of damage as well. One pylon over here could warp in just a lot of units. Finish off those, those mules and stop any of the mining. And now army wise we are in trouble for Grubby. Grubby down to about a 300 mineral army against a 7,000 mineral army. And the tables have pretty much turned hitting the production. Sterling just simply out macroing his opponent. Grubby here on Metalopolis, mass marauders and marines, not a siege tank in sight. And I believe Grubby will be giving the GG up in just a moment. This one Archon did get five kills though, so was able to snipe down and take and, and take down the rest of those ghosts. Marauders and marines still can continuing to come over here. We do see what two Colossus finally joining the play, but this may not wor be work out very well at all as those Colossus need to run away, need to get within cover of the Photon Cannons. High Templars now joining in as well. High Templars do have those Amulet Research, so now this Marauder Marine Army is going to get sniped down, taking a lot of damage as well, but still too much, and now Grubby says GG, well played. So a very, very interesting game here on um, Metalopolis. Sterling beating Grubby. Grubby losing to Mass Marines, Mass Marauders. Grubby did do a good job though with his research, but I believe those Colossus just came out way, way, way too late. Sterling, I mean, because of that, he was able to allow that Starport to just train up a lot of, a lot of uh, Metavacs and not have to train any Vikings. And that just really helps out the Terran army significantly as those Vikings are useful against Colossus. But that is about it. 
And then as soon as those Vikings finish off those Colossus, if we train about three to four Colossus, he needs to invest a lot of Vikings, eight to 10 Vikings in order, in order to be able to one shot them. And then those Vikings, once they're in ground mode, just um, don't deal that much damage and eat up a lot of food and a lot of supply. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between EG Grubby and Sterling here on Metalopolis.